Hello educators, welcome back. In today's video, we're going to be taking a look at the various ways Blackboard wants you to grade things, and I'm not too happy about this. Now before we get started, I wanted to tell you, welcome to Design to Educate. I'm an instructional designer that builds instructional videos for faculty at my university specifically on how to do things in Blackboard Ultra. Now, these videos are helpful for my faculty here at the school, but if they are helping you at your institution, be sure to subscribe to follow along as I provide my faculty with these tips and tricks. If you have any questions, feel free to leave them in the comment section below. I'd be more than happy to shed light on some things that are in our Blackboard Ultra environment. So without further ado, let's take a look at these graded items and the various ways that Blackboard wants you to grade submissions. Now, like I said, I am not too happy about the way that Blackboard wants you to grade particular items. There's a lot of settings, there's a lot of tools, and they're very helpful if you know exactly why Blackboard was creating it the way they created it. There are great rubrics that allow you to grade using the rubric. It makes it very mobile friendly, as well as it provides good feedback for your students. But if you're just grading to grade, get them the grade that they deserve, give them simple feedback, a lot of these settings kind of mess you up. And I have a lot of faculty that say, hey, I just went and graded all of the items in my grade book, and it still says that I have all of these things to grade. So let's dive right into a course that I have submissions in. We're gonna take a look at the various settings as far as where do we actually put the grade itself, in discussion posts, in tests and quizzes, as well as regular submissions. Let's dive right in. To get started, I am in a sandbox course that I did have some student activity in. I want to take a look at their submissions, kind of go through a grading workflow, and then discuss the various ways that they want us to actually grade these assignments. So the first thing I'm going to do is jump into my grade book. I can see that I have submissions here on an example discussion, I have one to post. I also have a quiz that I have two to grade, an on-ground assignment, two to grade, multiple attempts assignment. We're gonna be taking a look at multiple attempts. I have three of those to grade. And then I have various quizzes down here that I don't need to necessarily grade. So the first thing that I wanted to take a look at is the actual uh, assignments itself and take a look at the ways that my faculty here are having issues. I'm gonna click on this multiple attempts assignment. I jump in here, I can see I have two students. They give me the status that it says that one of them is in an attempt, or it says that one attempt to be graded, but it is saved as a draft. What this means is this student, or my preview user, went in and completed the assignment one time. They went in to their second attempt, but they didn't finish their second attempt. So that's very important to know here. The next student is a test student. It has two attempts to grade. Now, right off the bat, if I just come into this one and say that they have an 80, it now tells them that they override or I overrided the final grade itself. And if I just go ahead and hit post and post grades, now it says that this is graded, there's grades in there, they have an 80, but it does say that there's two attempts to grade. Now, if I come back up to the top here and I go ahead and I give this person an 80, it will do the same thing as I post those grades. It tells me that I still have something to grade. It also tells me up at the top under the status that I have three to grade. So what's actually going on here? Let's take a look at this student with the two attempts and if I click on their attempts, the menu pops up and you can see that I have the final grade posted and it says undo override right underneath this 80% here. What the system wants us to do is it wants us to override that grade or undo the override and put the points in the original attempt. So I have an attempt here, I, I said, Here's my first submission, so we can kind of keep track of this in my example. And right off the bat, I have this grade pill at the top, and I have this grade pill right next to the submission receipt number. Now, as 
I did in my very first time of grading my students' performances, I went ahead and just put the 80 points right up at the top. I went about my business because I went on to the next student. I can navigate to the students either an arrow here or the previous student here. And you can see that the override grade is the top pill. Now, Blackboard, if you're listening, this is very confusing because I just put it up here, but this is blank. It tells me that I just graded something, but it's not actually grading or reading that grade. What they want you to do is erase that override and put the initial points right here in the submission, which then dictates to the final grade what this student got. Now, I did this for my testing student on their second attempt. You can see here is my first attempt. It tells me that it is their second attempt. And if I simply go and hit save, I know that the grade is there. I can exit out. And you can see now that I have the testing student, I have the one attempt with zero grade, and I graded the final attempt. But watch what happens when I hit post and I say post this grade. That's notifying the student that they got an 80%. They're happy they got their 80% on their second attempt, but it still tells me that I have one attempt to grade. And that's because Blackboard wants you to grade all of the attempts, including the multiple attempts. So this means even though I gave them the most accurate grade up here, I need to go back into attempt one and give them a grade for that. And if it's a zero, it's a zero. Maybe they didn't put anything there. Maybe they did it wrong and we gave them feedback on this one particular attempt. In any case, you want to put it again in this pill, this grade pill next to the submission receipt. And it doesn't override the final grade because this is technically attempt two. So now if I go out of this, you can see that both attempts are there and available. And if I go right down, I can see that my grading submission is completed. In order for this to be correct, I need to go into this other student and grade their attempt. I can go in and see their submission. I can give them feedback. And now I can give them the 80 they deserve. But I do want to undo the override. And now watch this. If I click the undo override, it still stays an 80 because the 80 is coming from this pill right here. Now, if I go back, I need to repost this grade. I can hit post all if I want to. And now it gives me something that says nothing to grade because they are still in their saved draft. This means that the student is still involved in an attempt, but at least we can give them a grade on their first attempt. Now, this is just one of the many ways that you can grade assignments. There are the multiple pills, and I hope that they do do some kind of redesign on this. But for now, you know that the one pill right next to the grade submission is the final grade. That's the one that the grade needs to be in, not the override grade, to get the proper graded statuses in there. Now let's dive into a test that has a pool with multiple questions. How do we go about grading this one the right way? Now, diving back into my course, I wanted to take a look at two different quizzes here. The first one is a test with a pool. Now, this test with a pool, it has where it automatically grades itself and posts that grade. And you can see that the students did not attempt it. I do have a video about student submission statuses and how to read if the student actually participated in the gradable item or not. Just know that I have the automatic zeros on. So they both got a zero because it's unopened and it's late. I cannot go into this test and see what they did because they did not do anything. So if I try to click on their names, I cannot do that. If I want to override this point system and say they got a 50, then I can do that and it gives me the override status. So you can grade something that there is not a submission for. You can always override and give a student some points. The next thing that I wanted to take a look at is a quiz here. I built a quiz that's called Grading a Quiz. And this has 
uh, questions that I have to go in and manually grade. So I'm gonna go ahead and click right into this person's submission. You can see that they did get question one correctly. It was automatically graded to give them the 10 points. I have uh, no points here in question two, and I have in question three, I do have 10 points. So you can see that some of them are graded, some of them are not. And if I have three questions, I could see, okay, this is worth 30 points. Now, if I go up here, and I say that the person got 20, I can see now that I graded it, but it does tell me that it says undo override. And this is where Blackboard is saying, wait a second, you need to go into the actual quiz itself, click into the question, and give them the 10 points. Now, if I click off of this, it does give me a message that says you've applied an override, and it kind of tries to explain itself here. Uh, so most people just click off of that and say, hey, well, you know, what's going on? I just graded it. And maybe they click undo override, maybe they're not. And I've seen it both ways. So just know that in quizzes that need manually grading, whether they have correct answers in them or if they have short answers, fill in the blank essay, then you need to go in and put the points right here in the actual grade itself. A lot of people use surveys uh, in their courses. They build a quiz out that has questions such as this one, and they want to go and have students give them some survey data. Just know that you're going to need to put the points on each individual question itself. So it's very important for you to know where to put the actual grade that the student can get, as well as when we post it, that actually posts the right grade, not an override grade. The last thing that we're going to be taking a look at is grading with a rubric. These have been the most tricky for my faculty, and we're going to use a discussion as an example. Let's take a look. I've jumped into a discussion. I went right to the actual discussion itself. We can see that there are some replies. We can see that there are some posts, and I can see what students did what over here, and it does have a discussion rubric with a field. Now, if I want to go to grades and participation, you can see that somebody has an automatic zero because they did not do it as well as a student has a 20 out of 30, and it's waiting for me to post this. So I want to dive into this entry. We can see that they have several entries. Their name is going to be highlighted with various colors, depending on how well uh, the lexicon variation, the critical thinking, the word variation. It's going to be green to red to orange, uh, and the purple is going to be that new one that we haven't looked at. So beware of that. This has a discussion analysis. This just tells you, uh, you know, what complexity level it is. But how we're going to actually grade this, you can see that there is a rubric icon inside the grade pill. Now, if I click on this, I can simply give the person a 20 here. But that doesn't necessarily give me the correct grade. I can then give them a 23 if I wanted to. You can see that it is overridden you may uh, you know, want to redo the grade here in the rubric. And that's because in this one criteria rubric that I have, I can click in here and see that I have used the rubric as my grading scale. So I clicked on this. That's the original uh, you know, post. I just went ahead and graded that, but I can overwrite it. So what I have seen in the past that people come in here and they click into this pill, they give them the points, but then the rubric is completely blank. And what we want to do is grade using the rubric. So if the person got an original post in one reply, I'm gonna go ahead and click into this. I can override this grade, and you can see that it changed it to the 25. If I wanna go ahead and go right back to that 23, I can, but it doesn't allow me to change anything within the rubric because this override grade is dictating what's actually in here. So we want to actually redirect that. We can see that the person got a 25, and we can give them a feedback right on this criteria by clicking on this, expanding it, and you can see that I have a feedback right there. So it kind of works in the same fashion in a regular assignment. Knowing that there is the rubric, you want to go into the rubric and actually expand the criteria and use this as the actual grade itself, not the submission box, 
as well as not the override grade over here. And you would see that in the regular assignment. So there you have it, the various ways to input grades into Blackboard. And some of them are a bit tricky. I do know that Blackboard has monthly updates that come out. They are actively looking at their site, seeing what they want to do better. They are asking us. I encourage everyone that's using Blackboard, Blackboard Ultra, to jump into their Blackboard online community site, community.anthology.com. You can go in there, sign up for a free account and get a lot of information about what they are doing. They do hold office hours once a week to tell us what's going on, what are those updates looking like. And there's also some Blackboard Insider focus groups that ask us users, what would we want to see in the site itself? So I hope they catch on to this, knowing that there's just too many places to put grades and change their site to be a better online environment, a better online experience. Thanks for watching. Take care and I'll see you in the next video.